The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, so we will get started. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in live for another EBFA webinar. If you are listening to the archive version, special welcome to you as well. If this is your first webinar that you are tuning in on um, the EBFA webinars, um, welcome. A few things before we get started is that all webinars are recorded, archived, and can be found on the EBFA YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash EBFA Fitness. As always, if you want access to the PowerPoint, just email us at education at ebfafitness.com and I have no issue sending you the locked presentation just so that you can review it, reference it, and then truly apply the uh, information and knowledge to your clients, athletes, and patients. Uh, after I go over the educational aspect of the webinar, we will do a Q&A, so just know that there is a questions area on the bottom of the control panel that you can type in your questions and then uh, we will be able to answer those. So we are getting started. My name is Dr. Emily Splickle. I am the founder of EBFA, also a podiatrist, human movement specialist in New York City. Why I wanted to do a webinar on compression is because it's something that I actually started speaking about in a lot of EBFA education and integrating it into our programming. The reason why I like compression is because it really deals with the concept of movement efficiency. And a lot of the programming under EBFA also focuses on movement efficiency, particularly on how the body relates, anticipates, and loads impact forces and vibrations associated with those impact forces. So just do know that we are going to be tying that in so that we can link it into the Barefoot Training Specialist certification. So, and if you're not familiar with EBFA, please do check out our website and our certifications. So is there really a benefit to compressive apparel or is it a lot of hype? I know with many things, and we would all probably agree that Health, fitness, sports, performance is a very um, lucrative, trendy industry that a lot of people, if they start seeing a little bit of science, they will take it and go with it, even though there may not be a direct application to the way that they are integrating that. Compression apparel is one of those that people start associating or they start seeing that there's a little bit of benefit from, let's say, a compressive sleeve, so then they assume that if you just have an entire outfit that is made of compressive material that you will be benefiting from that, similar to say a compressive sleeve. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a lot of the science and see if there really are global benefits to compression, how you should be applying it, where does the science really support it, and then again we want to get the most efficacy out of these products. So some of the claims behind compressive apparel is that it will accelerate your blood circulation. What's important to note is anytime you think about compressive apparel, compressive sleeves, compressive stockings, I want you to think venous circulation. This does not have an effect on arterial circulation. It has an effect on venous circulation. We know that venous circulation is the circulation that brings the byproducts and the blood black back to the heart so that it can circle or cycle back. So when we speak about lactate removal, that will relate to our venous circulation. Some other claims of compression apparel has to do with altering kinematic parameters, enhancing proprioception, and then my favorite, which is reducing the soft tissue vibration. All in all, the claims are that you can become stronger and recover faster or offset your fatigue through the use of compression apparel. So if we look at the history of compression and compression apparel, it was initially introduced for a medical reason, a medical purpose, particularly in the 1950s, where it was used for postural hypotension, which means that if you had this baseline compression, when you were going from a laying to a seated or a standing position that you were able to maintain a certain amount of um, 
vascular compliancy that your blood pressure would not drop. So that's initially where it was applied. An area that we use it a lot, particularly in podiatry, is in compression stockings for venous insufficiency, post-surgical edema, uh, varicosities, etc. So it really is particularly focusing on this venous side. You may also be familiar with compression stockings or compression uh, apparel for preventing a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis, which is, again, post-surgical, if you're flying a lot, if you're sitting a lot, if you're bed-bound, etc. Um, that's where the compression is used as well. In the 1980s, that's when the compression apparel was actually initially introduced into sport. Now, I do want to make sure that everybody is clear about the medical application of compression because there's a lot of misunderstanding of how compression is actually graded. Um, and I've actually spoken to some compression apparel companies and compression sleeve companies, and they're not even familiar with the, the amount of compression that their product is providing. So for the sake of understanding how compression is used from a medical perspective, is that it's graded on millimeters mercury. Um, you can get compression apparels through um, Walmart or any sort of department store type um, store. You can get these compressive products where you can get up to 30 millimeters mercury compression over the counter. Anything that is higher than 30 millimeters of mercury must be prescribed. So a lot of the compression, just so you know, that you're probably getting in these over-the-counter athletic or sport compression apparel, compressive sleeves, is not exceeding that 20 to 30 millimeters mercury. Again, that is the degree of compression that focuses much more on venous return versus a pathological venous insufficiency or lymphedema type conditions where it would have to exceed that 30 millimeters mercury and that would be much more of a prescription. Where it was initially introduced into sport was in the initially in the Olympics where they had these um, Siamese compression apparel or fast skin. Even now in the Olympics, a lot of the speedo swimming apparel is this compressive fast skin. And a majority of they've done research looking at compressive swimwear, and a majority of the winners under the Olympics are wearing these compressive um, swimwear, which is quite interesting. So when we look at compression and strength, one of the research studies that stood out was by Harmon, and what he found is that compression around the knees. So this is not looking at compressive apparel. This is looking at just compression around the knee joint. They were able to increase the force output and actually improve their one rep max, which great application. So what was then applied or insinuated is that if you're doing compression compression around the knee and you're seeing these athletes get a higher one rep max then compression not specific to the knee but let's say in a short and you're doing squat thrusts will you get that same benefit as the compression around the knee what the research showed is that there actually is not a benefit in strength and one rep max when you're wearing compressive shorts. So what we want to remember with the compression is that you want to be very specific. If you are looking for lower body strength, the research supports the compression around the knee joint and that having the benefit as opposed to your entire leg being compressed through a compressive apparel or just your legs being in a compressive short. So definitely want to be very specific on where we're seeing the strength benefits for the um, around the knee joint versus with the shorts. If we look at compression and muscle function, one benefit that was supported by research is that the compression apparel helps improve your thermal regulation of your muscles, which means that your muscles reach the temperature that they needed for optimal function faster. So if you're thinking about these endurance athletes who have to train in different temperatures and they need to maintain that optimal 
uh, muscle temperature, having a full length compressive pant would benefit that athlete, which was which is very interesting as opposed to just wearing the shorts or wearing the pants and thinking that you're going to get a strength or one rep max benefit. So again, knowing where and how you're applying the compression and what your ultimate goal is, is how you're going to get the results with compression. So if we look at compression and lactate removal, so this is going to fall under our recovery or offsetting fatigue. What they saw is that if you used graduated compression apparel, again, it must be graduated, that there was this increase in venous return, which meant that your lactate was going to be flushed out of that area faster. When we exercise and when we exert, we get a increase in our venous compliancy, which means that it's actually harder for your, your venous system to return that blood flow. If you increase the compliancy, you have now made your veins loose, for lack of a better way of explaining it, which means that it's harder for the veins to bring that blood and all of the byproducts back up to the heart to be flushed. So from a recovery perspective, where a lot of the compression is used and where the science supports it is, let's say, a post-triathlon or a uh, post-marathon or post-endurance sport or um, activity is if you wear the compression apparel right after that activity, that's where you're going to see a benefit in your lactate removal. So you will have a faster recovery. So again, another very powerful science related application of compression. Now, when we look at compression and vibrations, this is the part that we really focus on in EBFA and where I use it with my patients particularly is, and this is again going to one of my favorite researchers, Dr. Nig, found that using a compressive sleeve was associated with an increase in the damping coefficient. And the damping coefficient essentially is just translating how effectively are your muscles damping the vibrations coming in. What Dr. Nig also saw is that there was an 8% decrease in the muscle recruitment at the pre-activation state of foot contact. Now we know that when we are running, jumping, doing these closed chain dynamic movements is that we ultimately want our muscles to be stiff before our foot even contacts the ground. This is what is referred to as a pre-activation response. So it's happening here. He was looking at 100 milliseconds before the foot even contacted the ground. That's really where they're looking for that EMG spike. What he saw is that there was actually a decrease in that muscle recruitment, which means that the sleeve was taking a lot of the stress that the muscle had to do or had to use. So then there was actually decreased muscle recruitment and that would offset your fatigue. So your energy preserves would actually last longer. All of this translated to a more efficient loading response and a decreased fatigue. So if you're thinking again from a endurance perspective, you're doing a closed chain, dynamic, repetitive, impact related endurance sport or activity having a compressive sleeve is actually advantageous because it improves your efficiency and thereby decreases your risk of injury. If you have not attended one of our certifications and you're not familiar with how we look at movement efficiency and how it relates to impact forces has to do with our perception of impact forces. Now, you may be familiar, hopefully you're familiar with we with our perception of impact forces as vibrations. So as we contact the ground and we get these ground reaction forces coming in, they stimulate vibrations through our soft tissue. Our soft tissue does not like to vibrate, which means that your soft tissue has to create stiffness to then damp the vibrations so they, that they do not transmit through the soft tissue. As you perceive those vibrations and you're, you're preparing to damp the vibrations, the way that you're doing that is through isometric contractions. So as our muscles contract isometrically, they create stiffness or pressure. And because all of our muscles of our lower leg 
or our body in general, but we're looking at the lower leg, is housed in these compartments. So all of the muscles are broken down into different compartments. You have an anterior compartment, a lateral compartment, you have a superficial deep or a superficial posterior and a deep posterior. All of those muscles, when they contract isometrically, increase the compartment pressure and create stiffness. Now, if you are thinking of this very similar to how we do an abdominal brace, what the purpose of doing an abdominal brace is to increase your intra-abdominal pressure. When you do an abdominal brace, you are essentially doing an isometric contraction. So brace, isometric, stiffness, or an increase in intra-abdominal pressure. Think of the exact same thing with your lower leg and how you actually damp the vibrations or bring in impact. So you're isometrically contracting the extrinsic muscles of the lower leg. They're all housed in these compartments. So as they contract isometrically, you will see an increase in compartment pressure, which translates to higher foot and ankle stiffness. That's ultimately the goal. So the way that the compressive sleeve works is almost like a weight belt. And the reason why you're wearing the weight belt is so that you can increase your intra-abdominal pressure when you're lifting heavier weights. Or if you don't have the strength to increase your intra-abdominal pressure, you use the weight belt as um, kind of an assistant in your, in your abdominal pressure. Same thing with the lower leg is that the compressive sleeve is increasing your baseline compartment pressure so that the muscles do not have to work as hard or as quickly, which will then ultimately offset their fatigue. In the case of somebody who has shin splints, ultimately we get shin splints when we cannot contract the muscles or increase our compartment pressure of our lower leg fast enough before the foot contacts the ground. So you contact the ground, you do not have a peak compartment pressure, the vibrations go through your, your soft tissue into your bone, and you get your shin splints. So using the compressive sleeve in a patient or a client who has shin splints, what you are doing is you're helping them to get a faster, higher compartment pressure without relying just on the muscles. So... That's ultimately what we're looking at from a fatigue perspective and from a loading perspective, shin splint application. But how does this translate to oxygen consumption, which would then translate to endurance and uh, actual performance? So what Dr. Nig saw is that there was a linear relationship between the damping coefficient and a decrease in oxygen consumption. So... As the damping coefficient went up, which is what happened when you wore the compressive sleeve, the local oxygen consumption of the muscles actually went down, which meant that they were more working more efficiently. So you were going to use your oxygen stores much less than if you have a lower damping efficient. So all of this translates to increased movement efficiency. So when you think about Com, uh, compression apparel or compressive sleeves and performance, this to me is the strongest side of the evidence-based application of pressure and compartment pressure and compartment uh, uh, compression apparel. So what's important to note though is that the muscle oxygen consumption rate and a lot of these benefits that we're seeing with compression is local. It's not global. So if you are measuring a global marker of oxygen efficiency or movement efficiency, you're not going to see it. However, if you look at the local muscle oxygen consumption, that's where you're going to see it, even though local will translate to global in many ways. But you have to know what you are specifically looking for. So if we look at the science and start to think about how we can apply it, some of those that are the most supportive or evidence-based would be particularly in, in endurance sports. So if you're thinking of an endurance sport, particularly an endurance sport that's going to be in different temperatures, having a compressive pant that's going to control the thermoregulation of the muscles benefit, evidence-based, 
great idea. If you're looking at these endurance athletes or endurance sports and you're thinking of the recovery benefit, then you necessarily would not want to do it during the sport, but it would be after the support or after the sport. And what you're doing is your focus is then getting that venous return to be a little bit faster. If you are wearing the compressive sleeve or the compressive pant during the endurance sport, then again, the evidence-based side of that would be that exercise and exert exertion increases your venous compliancy. So this will help get that continuous flush of the venous blood back up to the heart. Where I think the research is less clear is does the athlete actually have to wear a full compressive pant or because really a lot of our venous return is dependent on knee down. Your calf is a very strong, a lot of people will call it as the second heart. It's a, a pump. It's a huge way that you get blood back up to the heart. So if you are just using a compressive sleeve versus a full pant, do you get the same benefit? without looking at the research studies or seeing a research study that exists comparing those two, my recommendation would be to stick to the compressive sleeve, not doing necessarily the full pant. If you're looking at application in impact sports and there's a repetitive vibration and impact forces that are coming in, again, the compressive sleeve is going to help in the sense that it will increase your damping coefficient, which decreases the rate of oxygen consumption. So again, that would be an evidence-based application of the compressive sleeve. Thermal regulation, we mentioned that one already. So looking at the compressive sleeves for the upper extremity, same thing with that. From a thermal regulation perspective, 100% understand it. From a strength perspective, probably not as much supportive research with the upper sleeves. Where you may see a benefit is with a sport where they're actually having contact. So if you think like tennis or volleyball, and there's a constant impact related with this external uh, environment, whether it's the volleyball or the tennis ball, that in itself will create vibrations which your muscles have to damp. So having an upper extremity sleeve for that, I would put that under as evidence-based. If you're looking at specific injuries, again, shin splints is probably the easiest one to think of the application with this, would be helping to increase the damping coefficient using the compressive sleeve to help those muscles. And I use shin splints uh, or recommend it and prescribe it to my patients a lot. And when I do have a patient who has shin splints, I will have them use um, the shin splints for four weeks. Even if they are walking, I'm having them use the compressive sleeves. A another application that I use the compressive sleeves is a preventive measure. And one example of, of where this was applied is I was doing a workshop in Chicago and one of the attendees happened to be a high school track coach. And because Chicago with the cold temperatures, what they would do in preseason, if the weather would not be that nice, is they would actually have to go indoors into the high school and they would sprint and do all of their sprint drills on the high school hallway, which we know is made of concrete. Concrete does not vibrate the same way that different surfaces such as wood or natural surfaces outside dirt, etc. So these athletes were getting a much higher vibration or impact force load that was coming in with every heel strike or every foot strike. So by them using the compressive sleeve as a preventive measure and actually helping the body damp these excess vibrations is a recommendation that I would have. From a recovery perspective, again, this is where we're looking at the lactate threshold. Again, evidence-based, I would look at just the compressive sleeve versus the entire uh, pant or the entire body suit and having that because, again, remember that the most dependent position or area of the body is going to be the lower extremity. 
and particularly the knee down is the area that is particularly focusing on that venous return. So from recovery, I would do much more of a calf sleeve versus a full pant. Some of the research articles, if you want to reference back at them, NIG has some very interesting research related to this. And again, to understand the benefit of the compressive sleeve from an efficiency perspective or from a impact or loading perspective to understand how the body perceives impact forces as vibrations and ultimately how the body damps those vibrations is critical to understanding the benefit of compressive sleeves. Dr. Nig refers to this isometric contraction, increase in compartment pressure as the muscle tuning theory. So if you've never heard or you've possibly heard me refer to the muscle tuning theory, that's what it is, is that our compartments are tuned to a certain frequency of vibration. And really the, the goal of preventing injury is to make sure that the impact you encounter matches the anticipation of the compartments in your lower leg. The compressive sleeve helps you to match that anticipated impact frequency. There is a company that... Um, they actually sponsored the Barefoot Training Summit in Colorado this year, and one of the master instructors for EBFA is affiliated with Enerskin. If you are not familiar with them, they've been kind enough to offer a discount to all um, listeners and supporters of EBFA. All you do is enter New York 101, and that will give you a 10% discount. What's unique about Enerskin is that they have a silicone kinesiology type uh, tape or pattern within their compressive apparel. So you are also getting the benefit of stimulating the fascia lines, which is a different angle or perspective than just say a traditional um, compressive garment. So I encourage you to check them out, innerskin.com. And if you are interested in getting a product, then do check out the discount code. If there are any questions, we will go through those. Um, if not, then I encourage you to check out some of our workshops that are coming up, coming up in through the rest of the year. Again, we are in 25 countries, so there is hopefully a workshop that's coming to a location near you. Um, so question here. So there was a study on lactate removal requiring graduated compression. Uh, what exactly do you mean by this? So graduated compression means that, and again, we're talking about the calf sleeve. So calf sleeve graduated compression means that the sock or the sleeve is going to be tighter around the ankle so you're going to get 100% of its maximum compression and then as you get higher up in the calf it actually becomes less and less compression so by having it graduated that will essentially milk out the venous return if it was the exact same compression the entire way through you don't get that pump type effect. So as you're moving the ankle and you have that graduated compression, it's really that combination of movement and graduated compression which returns the venous flow. Um, you also want to make sure that it's not anything that is too tight. This is why you can't use... Um, an ACE bandage. A lot of people with shin splints will just tape their leg or they will do an ACE bandage. Those are not graduated and you have no way of controlling or regulating the amount of compression that you're using with the ACE bandage or athletic tape. Athletic tape is probably way worse than um, the ACE bandage is that you can actually cut off the arterial circulation where just remember that compression anywhere in the body your focus is venous circulation, not arterial. Um, yes, increased pressure from, it, it, it's actually decreasing the pressure from distal to proximal. You want your highest amount of pressure distal, and then as it becomes a little bit closer to the knee or to the heart, you're going to have less pressure. Okay, that was a very good, um, very good question. 
is it helpful for varicose vein um, compare stockings? Does it helpful in varicose veins? So varicose veins and the compressive stockings, huge, 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 huge. Anyone who stands a very long time, I tell them to wear compressive stockings. Any of the uh, fitness professionals and trainers who stand all day and are training training clients, even them, I will tell them to wear the compressive sleeve or the compressive stocking. Even if it's just from the, the benefit that your legs get fatigued, the reason they get fatigued is they're, they're holding you up, but you also are losing that venous return. So if you stand and you stand one place, not really moving the ankle and getting the pump effect, that actually increases your risk of varicose veins, um, which nobody wants because they're very painful. Um, it was something that anytime I do surgery, I wear compressive stockings when I'm doing surgery because standing in one place is one of the worst things for your venous system and for your posture. Um, does compression gear help prevent muscle pulls? Um, that's very interesting. I have not seen a benefit from that. Now, one of the things that I had mentioned in the beginning was that the claims are that compression apparel can alter kinematic parameters. That's one that I was not able to find a lot of research supporting it. Now, I know that Enerskin does have some research that was done in Korea because they have the silicone taping, which is similar to, let's say, like a rock tape or a kinesiology tape that are they able to actually stimulate certain myofascial patterns or muscles because of that silicone tape. I would look at that type of compressive uh, apparel versus a traditional compressive apparel and see. Um, but I personally have not seen any, so I would not see that that would prevent a muscle pull. I hope that that answers your question. Um, I have seen some research that requires compressive garments to be worn for many hours post-exercise, some as long as 24 hours. Any thoughts on this? Yes. So if you are doing a true um, endurance, so let's say you're post-triathlon, post-marathon, what the research was showing is that they were wearing these compressive garments for several days, up to five days, and then they were measuring their lactate levels and different physiology, physi physiological markers. So it's not a... Um, you know, go run and then wear it for an hour. It's something that it's serious for several days. If you're not running, you're using these compressive garments. And that again is looking at the venous return and focusing on that aspect of it and just making sure that you have this continuous venous pump to accelerate the um, lactate removal. So again, from, from a true endurance, like maximum output marathon triathlon, they did wear it longer. If you're thinking, you know, just your post run or after a workout that it will benefit you, um, probably not would it have to wear that for, for five days. You know, I do see a lot of, um, people in the gym, people who are doing CrossFit, who are doing the compression. They wear a lot of the compressive sleeves. And again, just remember that the science of it truly improving your strength, like one rep max strength, really is not supportive. Where it does improve the performance, though, is again going to be endurance. So much more the endurance, and it's through that damping of the vibrations, which offsets the fatigue of the muscles because they're not working as hard. That, that really, I, I find, is the strongest evidence-based application of compression. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, please do type those in. Otherwise, um, I would encourage you to um, check out some of the research and give me some of your thoughts on how you've started applying the compression. If you currently do apply the compression, if you've never thought of the compression for um, more of an efficiency perspective, such as the damping of vibrations. I'd be curious to hear how you apply it and the success or lack of success that you have had. So please do um, 
know that I'm always open to hear that. If you want to email me, education at ebfafitness.com. And again, if you want the PowerPoint, you may email me as well, and I can send that to you, education at ebfafitness.com. If there are no other questions, thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope that it was it was short and sweet, but it gave you some quick tidbits on the science behind compression and really where it's the most supportive and how if you've been considering applying it, this might encourage you to do so. Thank you again, and I will hopefully see you on another EBFA webinar. Take care.